Hello everyone. Welcome to episode 2 of my series on how to make an MMORTS in Unity. This video is going to be addressing very basic topics such as setting up our project and getting started with the basics of our game states. We're going to start by opening up Unity Hub. Then we want to go to installs and click add and pick the latest official release. I'll be using Unity 2019.2 0.17 f1 for this tutorial, although by the time you follow this tutorial it will almost certainly be different for you. Now at this point you may want to go get a coffee or some tea as this part usually takes a while. Now that that's done, we can get started on creating our project. Let's start by heading over to projects and then new and select the version of Unity we just installed. Now we just need a name to select the template we want to use. For this tutorial, we will be using the LWRP template, but in the future it may also be called Universal RP, but they are the same. Now that we've finished getting our project set up, we are going to start by cleaning up the project a bit. This is going to make things a lot easier to keep organized later on, not that I'm any good at organization or anything. I've went and skipped ahead for that. If you'd like to copy what I've done, you can pause now. Essentially, I removed unneeded assets and cleaned up the scene a bit as well as saved my scene as main in the scenes folder. After you've finished that, you can organize your files however you'd like, but I'm going to be making a folder called utilities and making a script inside of it called kingdoms manager. We then want to open the new C sharp script we created and get started working on the script that will do most of the management of the game, including helping manage our game states. Just going to hop in here real quick and apologize if you can't read the text. In later videos I will be more zoomed in and it should be easier to read, but for this video I didn't do that and I apologize. Next what we're going to want to do is make an enum called game state where we list all the different possible game states. Currently those are uninitialized, title, in editor, and in game. Uninitialized obviously is before we've set things up just so we know if we fully set up the game. Title is for the title screen and all its menus. In editor is for when we are in the map editor and in game is for when we are actively in the game world. Then we just add a variable to store our current game state. In this case I'm going to call mine current game state because that seems to make the most sense. Then we will want to add references for our game state objects. We could store them all as one prefab, but I decided to go with an approach of having references for our camera and lighting in the scene. Obviously this could change later, but for now that's the way I've decided to do it. We will also need to have prefab references for the objects we'll be using. For now I'll start with the main menu and in-game prefabs. Once again, this could change later, although that could be said of everything we program. We want to go back to Unity and start adding a new empty object to the scene. This object I'm going to also call it Kingdoms Manager, that way it's obvious what it will be doing. Then we want to add our Kingdoms Manager script to our Kingdoms Manager object. Wow, such unique naming. <laughs> Afterwards you want to make a new folder and call it Prefabs. And make prefabs for the camera and the light. One set for the main menu and one set for in-game. And I'm going to just speed past this process. If you need to see what I'm doing, you can always just slow the video down and you should be able to tell what I'm doing. Slowed video or, or sped up video. The goal was to keep these professional sounding, but uh, yeah, that, that kind of went out the window. Anyway, next up we need to drag the prefabs onto the script in our game object, each one going to its corresponding variable. Now we are going to set up a go to game state method, which is pretty self explanatory. Let's say you're in the title and you want to swap to in game or vice versa. This is the method that does that basically. So I'm not going to go over everything in detail in this method as I probably won't throughout most of the code as long as it's simple to understand. However, an example of something that we would go over is when we get into the detail on how to make maps or, you know, um, anything where it's not like, ah, add an if statement here. So don't worry later on if there's things you don't understand, it's probably going to be explained. 
And then some of these more simple things, if you do struggle with them, you can always look at nice resources for them. So for the line you see here, if game state equals equals current game state is pretty self-explanatory. It's basically just saying, okay, is the game state we passed in the same as the current game state? If so, we don't really need to do anything because we're already in that game state. There's not really anything for us to change. If the current camera does not equal no, so if it exists, destroy it. We don't want it. We want a new camera. Same thing with the light. Destroy it because we want a new light. And then here we have if the game state equals equals title, then we're going to do our title specific code. Like if we you know, need to instantiate certain prefabs or anything like that, or if there's anything specific to the title, it'll go there. And that's pretty self-explanatory. And then we have our, you know, instantiate line. Okay, so then we just need to finish up our instantiate lines for the title screen so that we can test it. And we want to instantiate both our main menu camera prefab and our main menu light prefab whenever we go to the title screen. So if the game state equals equals title, we want to instantiate both of those prefabs. Don't be like me here. I went and wrote current camera rather than main menu camera. Instantiate the main menu camera. I'll fix that. I tend to do that a lot. Anyway, once that's fixed, we really only have two things left to do. We need to go to our start method and actually call go to game state so that at the start we transition from uninitialized to the game state we want to move to. And depending on what we do later, that may change because we may do things before we initialize it. But for now, that's how we'll do it. Anyway, once you've done that, head over to the Unity editor, hit play, and verify that your things are instantiated. They should be underneath the Kingdoms Manager if everything worked, and you're good to go. All right, so I hope you enjoyed episode two on how to make an MMO RTS in Unity. If you did, there's a few things I'd hope you'd consider, either leaving a like and following me, or joining our community on Discord. There will be a link in the description, and I hope you'll check it out.